Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Andy at Lawrenceville Garage. We're getting ready to get started on the Toyota Tacoma LS swap, and the first step is to replace that fuel pump. So I wanted to show you what it looks like and going to take you through the process. But we're not using a factory complete drop-in pump. We're going to replace just the pump itself. But I want to show you there's a cover on the tank, and it covers up where the pump goes in. I want to show you what it looks like and the easy way to remove it. This is the cover that uh, goes over the pump. And when you first start to try to figure out how it comes off, it, it turns a little bit about maybe maybe an inch to the left or the right. And you're wondering, how does this thing fasten? The way to get it off is I use a trim tool. Come under this first area here. Uh, there's actually two little arrows here on the top of the tank. And come underneath and pull it out pull it away from you and then pop it up and once you do then you can push it back and it comes off and if you look on the inside here right here there's a little uh, plastic plastic tab right here and on the opposite side there are three one here here and here once you get this first one off this other just pops right off so there aren't any little uh, skinny plastic tabs or anything that you're gonna that you're gonna snap off once that pops off it it comes off real easily uh, now we're gonna clean this area up I don't want any trash getting into the tank and I'll come back to you once we've got it cleaned up and ready to and we're ready to remove the old pump okay now that we've got my hands free there's three main connections here and the two tools I'm going to use, I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and a little skinny screwdriver and a uh, paper towel. Okay, first is the electrical connection here. It's got a tab that you have to squeeze here, but it's kind of hard to squeeze this all the way back and clear what it clips onto. So using the needle nose pliers, I can grip it like this, and squeeze it, and I get the extra bit of leverage, and then we just work this off. Use my trim tool to kind of get under there. It comes right off. So I had to use my trim tool, not the little screwdriver on that, in order to get under it and give it a little bit of leverage. The electrical connection comes off. It's clean in there. Now, to get the two fuel lines off, you need to remove this little yellow clip. It pulls out. These have to spring out just a hair. So I push each one out slightly. Get my screwdriver in there and give it a little extra space. See, it pulls out of the way, and you squeeze them in. And a tab comes out. And when this first one, let me go ahead, you may lose a little bit of fuel right here. It pulls straight out. And the second one, get this clip free. And your lines are free. So you want to be careful not to lose these two clips. You're going to need those. This way your two lines are free. And your electrical connection is free. And I've got this paper towel to catch any fuel that gets spilled from the line because we didn't think to uh, eh, remove the pressure from the line before we did that. Okay, now to remove the tank, this uh, this outer ring has to be turned counterclockwise. And it has a couple little tabs. It's currently not snagging on any of them. That's the closest one, but it's not going to hit. So I'll use a big screwdriver here, and I use a dead blow hammer. I don't use a regular one. It's 
slowly turning. If it gets to one of those little tabs, you'll have to push it in to clear it, but so far I'm not. Catch on that tab. And when you get the ring off, it kind of has a little spring and it pops up a little bit. Remove the ring, the top of the tank with that. And you can see the top of the tank's a little dirty right here, so we'll just wipe that. No wiping it in. And your tank should lift right out. There's a little tab you have to push down to pull that electrical connection out. Comes out real easy. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, black and green one out as well, just in case they are connected to something that needs to be off. There, and both of them come out. The green and black one needed a little bit of persuasion. The clip is on the side, and even when I pushed it in, the little tab here uh, wasn't clearing, so the screwdriver helped. And on the pink one, it's on the on the flat side, and pushing that in was more than enough. The whole pump comes on. Okay. There is a little bit of debris in the pump. I'm gonna get rid of pour that out. Okay. So here's this assembly. And the pump is inside of here. Again, we'll see if that wire. And there's our pump. Okay, I need to do a splice here. This is the wiring that uh, runs from the pump, from the actual pump up to the top where the electrical connection was on the top of the uh, fuel pump. So I need to splice these two together. So I'm going to cut this plug off. This is what went to the original fuel pump. I'm going to splice these on and this go, this end goes to the new fuel pump. the heat shrink on before I totally forget it This is marine heat shrink, so it has adhesive on the inside. As a final test, I do a continuity test. I'm going to check the uh, the red wire, which is to the left here.
in the black. It's a good soldered connection. It should hold up fine. Okay, here are the components put together. Uh, it was difficult to video actually the changes I was making because there, there's quite a few. This is what the original pump goes up inside this uh, container here. I guess this is a filter and it also acts as a cooler. Uh, this on the side attaches to the top of this and are the two clips that we saw on the sides over here on the sides of the uh, uh, container on the side here and here. And this is what the strainer looked like, uh, the factory strainer. Uh, so this is what the new pump looks like. Here's the screen, the pump, uh, the new pigtail we just put on. Uh, the hose, uh, the inlet hose, or I'm sorry, the pump hose, uh, right here, the, the white one uh, replaced the black factory one that is still attached over here to the pump. So we just uh, replaced it and uh, used the worm screw here and here to hold it in place. We left the factory uh, uh, return hose in place. Um, let's see. By not messing with this side over here, the factory float is going to work just fine. We didn't mess with that. And this little black hose coming off the pump is going to attach right here the way the factory pump did. So now I'm just going to assemble these components back together uh, back into the main unit. Here's the unit reassembled. Uh, the only you know, kind of hassle to it really was some of this tubing is pretty stiff. And this uh, clear tubing, it's obviously universal, a little longer than I needed by a couple of inches. And you can't really cut it uh, because you need the kind of the flat area at the top where it mounts uh, up there for the worm clamp to work. Uh, but otherwise, the pump is down in there. Everything's connected. The wiring is now connected uh, externally. It looks just like before. The difference is you don't have the stock pump and all this strainer assembly and clip. So now it's time to reinstall. And we're going to lower the unit back in. Just tilt it over a little bit to get that float in the tank. Go straight in. And the ring. Hold on top. And our orientation before was like this. So I'm going to make sure everything's going to line up just right, like that. Okay. Also, before uh, installing the uh, rubber o ring that's in there, you can put a little lubricant on that so that as you're twisting this uh, plastic ring on, on, that it won't tear it or snag it. There's a little tab on the side over here on that, that orients this, uh, this whole unit. <clears throat> as tight as I can get it by hand, I'm going to add a little bit extra here with this. All right, I was just getting it, tapping it well enough so that it would catch behind this little clip here and it won't back off. Uh, let's see. Now we're going to clip both of these pressure line connections and to put the yellow clips back in place. Good to know. Something I didn't think about on the orientation, the clips go in. They don't go in both from the same side. This one goes in from this side so that it snaps in place, and this one goes in from the back so that it snaps in place. I had forgotten about that on the original, uh, when we originally took it apart. Okay, there are our electrical connection. Snap, it's connected. Okay, it's ready to try out.
the pump was a success. It works. That's great. One thing I did learn, pay attention to those little details like those yellow clips. They go in from opposite sides. If you try to make it go the wrong way, you might break it. That's uh, one little part you don't want to lose or break. You have to turn around and try to find a dealer that has one. Uh, secondly, doing this with the bed off was way easier than trying to drop the tank. Anytime I've ever had to drop a tank with gas in it, it was usually half full or more, and it's very hard to handle. This was much simpler. The beds on these Toyota trucks come off with six bolts that are on the bed side. Very easy to uh, remove. Uh, well, I think we did that in about five or ten minutes. Uh, it took more time just to uh, take the tail lights off, run the wiring through the, uh, through the bed and out the bottom uh, so that the bed could be removed. And then always remember to uh, remove your gas cap and uh, make sure that it's disconnected so that when you lift the bed off, it doesn't pull things with it. So in this case, with the exception of the gas cap uh, and the filler neck, the tail lights and six bolts holding the bed on, it's way easier to remove that and deal with this fuel pump than to go through the hassle of dropping it from the bottom. Because if you don't know what the top of the tank looks like, you take a chance or a risk of breaking a lot of these other little hoses and plastic clips. And if you do, I mean, that just adds, adds to the problem. So we've had a good day today. And the uh, we've had a good start. We got the fuel pump in. It works. Now we're going to move on to the front of the truck. The next step, we're going to start removing everything and taking it apart and labeling everything. So I hope you got something out of the video. Appreciate a thumbs up. We'll catch you in the next one.